Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. In today's video I'm going to check out this uh, Sanyo Wavy MSX2 machine and uh, all the equipment that uh, came with it. So I came over this machine uh, on the Norwegian site fin.no a while back and uh, I just had to buy it because uh, it looks so nice. It is complete boxed and uh, has a lot of equipment and uh, cartridge games. So <laughs> I haven't really tested it uh, other than just uh, turning it on and uh, I ran a few games uh, when I unboxed it. But uh, besides that, I don't know uh, the full condition of this machine and that's what we're going to check out in this video. By the way, if you hear some noise in the background, it's uh, me printing something on the 3D printer. Yeah, and this is it, the Sanyo PHC23J and uh, it's also called the Wavy23. And with it, it came with a joystick. A Sanyo cassette data recorder, bunch of uh, games, <laughs> and the FSFD1A, three and a half inch uh, floppy disk drive from uh, Panasonic. I never had any experience with the MSX machines back in the day, but uh, now in the recent years, since I started this channel, I uh, actually started to like MSX machines. Uh, this is uh, the third one uh, I have now. Really nice machines and uh, quite uh, versatile and uh, powerful. Yes, and the uh, equipment, floppy disk drive and uh, cassette recorder. The boxes almost look uh, unused. Uh, I don't think uh, this has seen much use at all, but I haven't tested them, um, so I don't know the status gonna check that out but first let's take a look at the machine. The box looks very nice um, so uh, not a lot of uh, wear and tear. Yes and here it is and it is a Japanese machine and uh, you can see that it has uh, Japanese um, characters on the keyboard but the machine looks very nice a little bit dirt um, especially the keyboard so it uh, needs some cleaning so the form factor is uh, rather cool uh, with this uh, sticking out it has two cartridge uh, slots and if I compare it to one of the other MSX machines <laughs> you see the similarities difference is this one has an American keyboard this one does not this one is an AX170 from uh, Al Alamia and uh, I have made a video about this before. One thing I did with this was uh, to replace uh, the power and uh, set it to 240 volts uh, because uh, it supported that. And the problem with this machine that it is uh, Japanese 100 volts and it uses uh, this kind of uh, plug which is not the same as we use here in uh, Norway. I have a step down converter so I can use it but I was hoping that uh, this could be converted to 240 volts. However that might not be possible without replacing uh, the power supply inside. There's no switch here to switch between uh, uh, different voltages. If we take a look at the back and see the port it's a printer port, RGB video output, uh, composite video and audio, channel selector and an RF out. And uh, on that side there's uh, the power switch and uh, here's two joystick ports and uh, the cassette port. 
All right, that's enough uh, talk for now. Let's uh, power it on and run a test. I have this uh, MSX diagnostics cartridge I'm gonna use. To use the RGB video via SCART, uh, I need a special cable for that. I don't think I have that unless it's uh, compatible with uh, some other cable I have. Uh, I'm gonna check. So just connect the composite video and the audio. And here's a step down converter from uh, 240 to uh, 110 volts AC. This one uh, runs on 100 volt, which is kind of weird uh, <laughs> voltage. Do they still use that in Japan? Uh, I'm not really sure, but I guess it will survive 10 more volts. Well, let's see, does it still uh, power on? Yes. 128 kilobytes of RAM, only 28. 0.8 is uh, available for basic. You have these shortcuts <laughs> connected to the function keys. So it works. Gonna try now with the diagnostics cartridge. I haven't made a case for it, but uh, yeah, just do like that. Okay, it did not start. Trying uh, port 2, it could be, of course, uh, dirty um, connectors here. Okay, that's different. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, it uh, struggles a bit. Yeah, I think it's just a case of uh, dirty contacts. Uh, I just push it in now and uh, wiggle it a little bit around. I know it actually started, so we can um, test here. So it has different um, types of test, graphics, colors, and everything like that. Not very interesting, but uh, if you have an issue, obviously you can uh, use this to diagnose things tests the different uh, graphic modes, brights. Yeah. And you can test the keyboard uh, joystick, PSG, don't remember what that is, uh, RAM layout. There's no uh, RAM test here. I think I haven't seen it. So here you have the details. It is uh, 64 kilobytes of RAM, 128 kilobytes of video RAM, Japanese keyboard, uh, VDP chip type, frequency 60 Hertz. Okay. Uh, and the date is uh, 19 uh, of October, 2056 <laughs> okay and the time is 2939 that's completely <laughs> rubbish well, let's test the keyboard then yeah it seems to work just fine different graphics tests yeah this has a rather powerful graphics for that time uh, <laughs> now let's try a game I have no clue what this is, some wars. <laughs> See if I can play some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I always wonder what happens if you uh, insert two cartridges. Okay, it seems to be uh, defaulting to the first one. If I take that out. Okay, Magic Soft, some game written in Japanese. 
absolutely no clue. Okay, that was the initial test and uh, now it's time to do some cleaning on this. Uh, it doesn't look very dirty uh, on the actual case, but it is dark gray, so hard to see if there's uh, any dirt. Just gonna try with some uh, alcohol here and see if uh, it leaves anything on this pad. Oh yes, that is a lot of dirt. And between the keys I can see a lot of dirt. Probably doesn't show uh, up on the video, but um, I'm gonna pull this apart now. It will be interesting to see how the power supply is, if there is any possibilities to yeah, convert it to uh, Euro standard 230 volts. All right, I moved it to the repair bench. Uh, let's see now how we can open this up. Six screws. So it has two uh, rubber feet on uh, the front, but just the plastic there and this uh, raised area here. Screws are out. So let me see how do we open it. Oh, simple, just lifts right up. <laughs> okay, there's a couple of uh, LEDs uh, there. Um, yes, uh, since I'm gonna clean uh, the covers, I'm just gonna take them off. Uh, I mean, take them off the cover before I clean it. And here's some <laughs> trays for supporting the cartridges. And the keyboard, uh, yes, it just lifts up. And uh, there's two ground wires. Oops. And there's this flat flex cable here. There's actually two of those. Just need to be a little bit careful here. Don't want to rip those. All right, that's the motherboard in all its glory. And <laughs> look at that, it has a rather large battery. Cadnica backup. Let's see, does it still have some uh, voltage after all these years? Nope. It's completely empty, zero volts. <laughs> But it might still take charge and it hasn't leaked, so um, I'm not really sure what kind of battery this is. It's a Cadnica, is it a cadmium type battery? Let's check the motherboard and uh, yes, and that's one of the issues with uh, these MSX machines. The Z80 CPU and a lot of other chips have been integrated into uh, uh, a custom chip like this. This is uh, Yamaha copyright 1984 and uh, yeah obviously if this chip um, go bad then it might be hard to both <laughs> find a new one and to replace it because it is uh, surface mounted very small uh, pins on it but otherwise everything looks all right can't see any bulging or uh, leaked caps this far at least and that's the power supply and yes it's a 100 volt transformer so hmm. this cannot easily be converted to 230. You could of course replace the whole uh, power supply uh, with another one but I'm not gonna do that at least not now I'm gonna leave it uh, original um, just gonna have to use that step down transformer then. Uh, depending on the voltages going into the motherboard, you could of course uh, replace it with a modern variant. For example, like this. Actually, it would be interesting to see what kind of voltages it has. Try not to short anything. It has uh, minus 12, nothing. And 5 volts. Yeah, plus 12. So that's pretty standard plus minus 12 volts and 5 volts and uh, yeah in fact then I can use that uh, power supply I just showed you. Uh, <laughs> you could of course replace the transformer and uh, yeah depending on what uh, outputs it have let's see now I'm gonna measure. Uh, it's uh, 9 volts there and uh, on this 
16 or 15.6 volts there. The motherboard isn't screwed down to the case, it's just held in by these uh, clips here. Then you can lift the whole thing. And the screws are on the, the PCB, it's just for holding this uh, massive RF shield here. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna take off this, uh, see no point in that. The PCB looks to be in good shape. But the power supply I'm gonna remove, it is screwed down, no less than six screws. Gonna be careful not to touch these caps, <laughs> I mean the terminals on the caps. So the inside of this machine is quite similar to the AX170 I showed you. And the transformer, it's just uh, sitting loose. <laughs> All right, the whole thing is freed up. And a little bit dust here and there. Just gonna clean it. Keyboard is a different matter, quite dirty, so. This might actually have seen some use. I'm gonna pull out all the, um, the keycaps and uh, give them a good bath. Yeah, this just uh, comes up with using your fingers. There's actually two springs, one in the middle of uh, this stem and one around. And it's of course quite easy to, <sighs> to lose uh, some of the springs, so. I think these are sitting tight there, but if you pull, it will come loose. I think I'm gonna use the keycap puller after all. Some of these are quite stuck. So removing and cleaning keys from a keyboard is kind of uh, relaxing and yeah, gives me a good feeling <laughs> back to the 80s. Many times the spring can be uh, corroded uh, with rust, but uh, these look absolutely fine. So only these large um, keys left, but uh, somehow they are not coming up. Um, something is holding them. I'm not really sure what that is. So just need to be careful not to break anything. Probably some support mechanism. Yeah, I can see it now. Um, there's a couple of uh, clips there holding around that support bar. If you just turn it and then turn it the other way, it comes out. However, now that support <laughs> metal bar fell down. <laughs> under here so it might be difficult to get it uh, back but um, yeah we'll see how it goes some of the springs are full of dust so how about this space bar then some other mechanism. Oh, I don't think I wanna rip it out because I might damage it. But the whole keyboard plate is just clipped in and uh, yeah, no need for unscrewing anything to uh, take it out, I guess, if I can get all those clips out at the same time. <laughs> Then we can clean the keyboard membrane a little bit. And we also get to know how it works. <laughs> so this means that the keyboard membrane can be replaced. So it's this side we wanna clean. Just gonna put it there for now. And here we see those uh, retaining clips. And yeah, I would actually have to, <laughs> to open it to get those back in place. So I think this is actually the correct way to do it. Push them out from uh, behind. 
same with the space bar need to collect these so I don't uh, lose them yes and there's a bigger spring for um, the two biggest springs for um, the space bar I need to keep them separately okay so one benefit of uh, removing the back plate uh, is that uh, now I can clean this whole plastic in soapy water yeah it's quite dirty in some places the membrane has a lot of dust on it just gonna use a cotton swab with some alcohol gently uh, clean the surface yeah some dirt clean the other side as well no this isn't that kind of keyboard that you have on the commodore 64 machines for example that has um, these carbon pads um, these are two uh, layers of plastic with the contacts in between and the key pushes down makes contact all right now i'm gonna take all the parts uh, down and clean them real good i'm gonna use a combination of first using window cleaner for a couple of minutes uh, spray it all over then i just scrub and i wash it afterwards in uh, hot water with uh, dishwashing soap and i always get a good result uh, of that even with the keys uh, i never have to actually clean each key separately if i use that method so that's what i'm gonna do now and i'll be back when i finished with that everything is now very clean and I'm gonna try and assemble it <laughs> if I can remember how I think the first thing to do is to get these uh, support uh, rods here back into place and uh, place those keys first and then I can put back at the back cover Just want to make a little signature for uh, the next owner of this. <laughs> then the rest of the keyboard. Okay, here's a bit of an issue. Uh, I came across these three springs that are smaller than the rest <laughs> and they actually don't fit uh, the space bar had two different springs that I held separately but these I didn't notice so they must have come from uh, some of the other keys so what three keys can be special and have uh, smaller uh, springs yeah I found one here <laughs> So probably these two then, yes. All right, that's almost it, final two. Now I'm gonna install uh, the membrane and the back plate. So it's not possible to place this the wrong way. Just push them in.
The motherboard, I'm not going to do anything particular with it. Uh, it is kind of clean, so um, yeah, not much uh, dirt at all. I'm not gonna recap it uh, now because all the caps looks all right. Maybe that will be a project uh, sometime later. However, I am gonna remove this battery because I fear it can start leaking and I don't wanna have that. <laughs> I am gonna clean the porch with some electronic cleaner. So I'm using this paper just to try and rub off uh, the metal contacts a little bit. Yeah, some dirt. Then this battery. Okay, it's out. So that's a 3.6 volts. Standard charge 1.5 milliamps. So you could probably replace it with uh, some other battery coin cell. So I'm just trying to charge it here, but uh, it doesn't draw any current at all. So uh, yeah, this is probably completely dead. All right, in with the keyboard, and we're done with this machine. All right, the machine looks a whole lot better now with um, cleaning the keyboard and everything. Just gonna use this uh, protection, 303 protectant. That's uh, for uh, protecting plastics. This should uh, protect it from um, yeah, the environment, UV light and uh, dirt. And it makes it a little bit more uh, shiny. Okay, I'm ready to test if it still works. However, I did forget to put this back into the machine, so need to open it once more, but uh, we can still test it. Yep. <laughs> and what is this? <laughs> Some kind of Some kind of pinball game? Seems to be running way too fast on this machine. I have no clue on what to do here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all the keys are still working very nicely. Now I'm gonna check out this uh, cassette recorder. It's a Panasonic Passamate 22MR22D. R, and it's a kind of a special one. I have never seen a computer cassette recorder like that. Doesn't that look kind of futuristic? <laughs> it even has a tape inside, uh, Alien Bounce for MSX 16K RAM. And it came with some papers. I have no clue on what this is. It's Japanese, but um, yeah, it seems to be like some warranty stuff have no idea so let's take a look at this uh, spacey um, cassette recorder <laughs> it says double speed loading and uh, it has different uh, modes level fix mode one two and three tape speed normal and high face normal and reversed monitor on and off and here you can adjust the level. So it's kind of advanced and uh, can probably be used for a lot of computers. It has remote, it has load, it has save, and it has TV in. So what does that mean, TV in? You can connect audio from your TV to this and perhaps record audio. <laughs> Here's the counter. And here's a save indicator. Only issue is that uh, this too runs on uh, 100 volts and uh, <laughs> I only have one 
step down transformer here so how am I gonna solve that all right I just did it like this however you should never do like I do here this is very dangerous I just have the live wires 100 volts uh, <laughs> hanging uh, loose here gonna have some tape around so that I don't accidentally touch them the right thing to do was of course to, to get an extension cord or anything like that and wait for that but I don't have time for that okay it is working the belt is uh, obviously still intact and it can rewind and play the machine came with this cassette uh, cable here and uh, yeah this is standard msx it has uh, read write and uh, motor control and these are color coded so that's easy yeah so let's see if we can load anything from that tape haven't uh, tried it before this is actually the first time i try a uh, cassette recorder on uh, the msx i have used like this uh, virtual cassette uh, types um, where you have a memory card but never a real cassette recorder i mean those uh, memory card solutions are very handy if you just want to load a game and you have lots of them on one card however there's nothing like uh, the real hardware here so let's uh, see it's c load It didn't find anything. Let's try this monitor. Yeah, I can hear there is data. However, not really sure about these modes. Okay, it's a bit scratchy there. I'm gonna rewind and try once more. At least it gives a signal for the cassette recorder to start. Yeah, now it works. Phone A, B. Okay, that's just a loader for B load, binary load. So probably this uh, switch here was maybe in between <laughs> modes. Yes, look at that, alien bounce. So that just worked uh, fine. Okay, finally a game that I can play without reading any instructions. <laughs> By the way, this machine has a reset button. Just something out of interest. Can this load with uh, double speed? I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna set the uh, tape speed to Yes, <laughs> that worked. Oh yes, it loaded at double speed. <laughs> Very nice. Now I have just one MSX tape from before, this show jumper, and uh, I have never tested it. Just want to see if it works. It says uh, load show. R. Gonna try at double speed. Yeah, phone show. I turned off the sound and monitor. <laughs> Too noisy. Okay, cannot find 64k of RAM. Okay. Try once more at the normal speed. Uh, Harvey Smith's show jumper, Team Sanyo. So it's kind of a horse show jumper game. 12 different courses. Nope, didn't work. Probably not compatible. This is a MSX game and this is an MSX2 machine. Or there's something wrong with the tape. I mean, there is 64K of RAM on this machine. But that's enough with the testing of uh, the cassette recorder. We have to take a look inside, don't we? Just to see if there's anything we need to clean up. So it has this weird placement of the screws. How do you open? 
whole thing is loose, but I uh, can't seem to find the correct uh, trick here to get it uh, off. Oh yeah, the trick was to open, <laughs> open this and then it came loose. Um, okay, look at that. That's a lot of uh, stuff. Belt looks alright. Yeah, nothing much to um, do here actually. It is actually quite um, nice looking inside. Couldn't have been used a lot. I am gonna clean it up a little bit anyway. Start with the um, reed head. Then I just clean a little bit all over, mop up any dirt that's there. Clean this uh, roller here. Yeah. Then I'm using a little bit of um, electronic cleaner. There's this foot meter here. And then you have these um, micro switches. Not sure how well it will go into the switch, but uh, at least I'll put something there. And we have uh, this switch here. There's a switch here that uh, goes down when you press one of these two buttons and uh, it just touches some metal on the other side. A little bit of uh, cleaning there. Yeah, that's it. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to pull this apart. It is working. And uh, yeah, there's probably a belt from uh, the motor uh, on the back side of this. This is just a belt for the counter. But as long as it's working, then there's no point in uh, doing anything else. Well, I had a hard time taking this off and now I get a hard time putting it back. Yeah. It's there. The trick was to move this switch all the way down. <laughs> okay, this is not uh, into position. Just pull it all over there and uh, try again. Yeah, now it's there. So, the exterior, I'm just gonna spray with some uh, isopropanol alcohol and rub it off a little bit. Yeah, it was kind of dirty as you can see. <laughs> you know what? This is not easy to get uh, cleaned. I'm just gonna put it in some hot soapy water and let it stay there for a while. The cassette recorder has been cleaned and it works uh, just fine. Now it's time to take a look at this guy. The three and a half inch uh, floppy disk drive. And the box looks almost um, as new. <laughs> this is the floppy disk drive from Panasonic FSFD1A and it's of that kind that you plug into the machine, the expansion port. It has its own power supply so I can, uh, instead of using this 100 volt, I can use uh, just a regular uh, 9 volts power supply that I already got lots of. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a double-sided, double density, a double track, 720 kilobytes drive. <laughs> it has some Japanese text here. Yeah, no idea what it says, MSX DOS something. And the drive comes out here where you place your floppy disks. Underside, some Japanese DC 9 volts and uh, made in Japan. It has a center negative 9 volts. I measured this one and it actually has 15 volts. Uh, that's a bit high. However, I have this and uh, here's uh, a plug where you can just uh, turn it around to reverse it. 
So now it's center a negative. So now you see why it's handy to, to have uh, two um, expansion ports. Uh, <laughs> this one goes in here. If you place it uh, in uh, slot number two, then you cannot fit the cartridge, but uh, place it in slot one and you can fit the cartridge behind there. However, this is kind of a <laughs> awkward uh, arrangement. <laughs> I would rather have an external floppy disk drive lying on the side than one flipping around on top like this. But anyway, let's uh, see if this works. Yeah, it shows power. I don't have any software for uh, the MSX on floppy, so um, I can't try and run something. But we can, of course, uh, use a floppy and um, yeah try and format it and uh, see if we can uh, write something or copy something to it. And the command is call format. And the drive, I guess it's uh, A. So we're gonna format it uh, two sides. Yes. It formats. It came out with a disk error. I tried to read the directory with the files command. It didn't work, so I'm gonna try and uh, call format again. And uh, no uh, single sided. Nope, that didn't work. Gonna try another floppy disk. Maybe that one is um, somehow bad. Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> Okay, I've actually found one uh, floppy disk for MSX that I made uh, some while back when I was working on the Philips MSX machine that has a built-in floppy drive. So, can it read it? Nope. So, if you uh, boot the machine, it actually tries to boot from uh, the floppy. But it can't. So... <laughs> That means uh, I have to open this up and see if it needs a good cleaning or some adjustments. Hopefully it just needs some cleaning. Uh, it sounded like it's working uh, normally uh, <laughs> mechanically, but uh, we'll see. And uh, yeah, we get to open it and take a look inside. That's always fun. It's loose, however, this uh, sticker here needs to be removed. It is kind of loose, so... Okay. Yeah. Just push it back and then it came loose. <laughs> There's a little uh, cable for uh, that little LED. Yeah, and here we have a regular Mitsumi uh, floppy disk drive, and uh, yeah, it has this uh, controller card. Yeah, definitely some layer of something here. I'm not really sure. It's some white stuff. So I'm just gonna clean the contacts, and um, then I'll take a look at the actual drive some white layer also on the contact. So there's a floppy disk uh, controller BIOS, copyright MEI 1987. So I'm not gonna do much with this except uh, just clean it up a little bit. Now let's uh, clean up this uh, floppy drive. See if it starts working again. It doesn't look uh, <laughs> dirty at all. Blow away some of the dust. No, that head doesn't want to move uh, easily. I can push it, but then it just jumps over one uh, thread. Um, Okay, I'm just gonna clean the heads. I just use uh, this cotton swab with um, a little alcohol, both sides. So I'm not gonna do anything much more than this. If it still doesn't work, then uh, it probably is broken and needs a repair, which I'm not gonna attempt in this video. Okay, let's see. 
now it still came out with uh, disk IO error. Formatting didn't work either. I opened it up again and I actually think I see what's uh, the issue here and it is in fact that uh, little flat cable. Um, it's hard to show you. Yes you see that uh, flat flex going to uh, the read and write head. It is in fact ripped. Now you can see it. And I don't think I did it because uh, the drive works as it did before I opened it. But that is not an easy fix, I guess. I'm not really sure how to fix uh, that. Uh, I would need a new cable, uh, obviously, and um, not really sure if that's obtainable. But in fact, I can just pull it off. <laughs> now it is damaged for sure, but um, probably someone have opened this before and tried to lift this as I did, and then they partly ripped off uh, that flex cable. So how do you fix something like this? It's not possible to solder and um, I guess the end goes to the actual drive mechanism here. Not really sure how it is uh, connected there. I can see it's uh, glued down. At least now I can clean up uh, a little bit more and uh, especially this uh, drive axle is full of uh, old grease. So the seller of the machine, he didn't mention anything like this, uh, but he didn't say that it was working either. So, so it turns all right, but on these drive uh, rails here, uh, <laughs> seems like it's uh, all new uh, grease that was sprayed there and then the head has never moved. So this is just glued to the side. Anyway, I don't see any possibility to replace uh, that cable and um, yeah, this drive is damaged. I could of course try to get a new uh, read and write head here and or try and find some from another floppy drive or I can replace the whole floppy drive itself. But that was a kind of a pity. All right, so I wanted to test if this uh, floppy disk uh, device actually works and uh, I tried a couple of Amiga drives, but I couldn't get them to work. Um, simply no activity and um, the computer said that uh, the drive was offline. But now I connected uh, a GoTech drive and I put a couple of um, uh, MSX uh, floppy disk images on it. And uh, let's check out that. Yes. <laughs> All right, so that worked. So then I know that this um, device is working. It uh, can be used with the GoTech. So this is a Konami game collection. <laughs> okay, nice little game. So maybe I'm just gonna install a GoTech in that uh, drive instead. Kings Valley. <laughs> but will it actually fit? I mean, uh, the power cable for uh, <laughs> the drive is uh, very short and can't reach over there and uh, I think it would be better if it was uh, placed the other way around and um, yeah I think it can fit. Only need another uh, a longer cable that can be um, turned. Yeah it can fit. Only need a little bit of uh, <laughs> glue since there's um, yeah, there isn't any way to uh, screw it into the case. But that's something I'm gonna consider uh, later, not in this video. That was it for the floppy disk drive. And now the last thing I wanna check out is this uh, Mitsubishi MSX joystick, ML50JY. <laughs> Box looks absolutely uh, unused. 
and in fact the joystick too uh, looks to be unused judging by the cable and everything everything is uh, super clean i'm just gonna test that it works <laughs> made in japan it's a kind of weird joystick but uh, yeah it sits uh, nice in uh, the hand probably sits uh, better on the table with these uh, suction cups if you didn't know already the msx machines uses a standard atari joystick port i'm not gonna take it out of uh, <laughs> i'm just gonna put it in like that here's a game called uh, something in japanese and uh, mia <laughs> becky okay copyright 1983 uh, mia so let's see if this works. Yes. Can't jump. I didn't see any point with this game. Just walking around doing nothing. Um, not possible to jump. And uh, nothing you can uh, take. Maybe there's some keys you're gonna use. I don't know. Anyway, the joystick uh, worked just fine. All right, that was it for this video. The machine works great. Uh, everything worked fine except for the floppy disk drive. I am searching eBay <laughs> right now to find a replacement, but. Uh, as I said, I might install uh, Goldtech instead. So I hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you soon. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, watching and special thanks to my patrons. Uh, see you. Bye bye.